Welcome to another uh, edition in the Socialist.net video blog. Uh, this week we're joined by Hamid Alizadeh, the editor of Mobarezi.org, the Iranian Marxist newspaper. Uh, Hamid today is going to be talking to us about the developments in Iraq over the past few weeks. So Hamid, we've seen uh, in the past few months the rise of this group, uh, the IS, the Islamic State, uh, and in the last few weeks uh, the um, bombing again in Iraq taking place. Um, can you explain some of the latest developments over the past week? Well, uh, on Wednesday, uh, Barack Obama, in a state, in a in an address to the American nation on a live television, uh, announced basically the a beginning of a new um, long campaign, war, uh, military campaign, basically, in uh, in in Iraq, and uh, this is this is quite it could seem quite absurd coming from a from a president who was basically elected uh, on, on one of the main points that he was elected on was on withdrawing troops out and being against the, the, the war in Iraq and now he's forced, he's basically dragged in back back into Iraq um, however uh, what, 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 will, what will this uh, do uh, you know, what will this do to solve this dream? What, what are his plans basically what he said is not only is he going to do um, he's going to uh, bomb, like have a sustained bombing campaigns inside Iraq but also in, in Syria uh, he's going to. Um, he's not. He said he's not going to send in ground troops on that. For that, he he's going to depend on other forces, which he doesn't uh, doesn't really explain. Now, this has led to basically the, this has become a, kind of a farce, basically, because he was trying to garner big international support for this. He's, he's trying to get uh, European states, other Western states, and also Arab states, especially the Gulf states, and so on, to send troops and to send. Um, and to send resources basically uh, to, to, to go in but this is all kind of grind, ground to a halt now they try to paint it as if they, they have massive support for this but there's very little uh, happening the biggest successes they can they can talk about is uh, Australia which is now sending uh, 400 uh, troops to Iraq which is not nearly as much as, as, as is needed to sustain such a campaign uh, the, the Britons, the Brits have uh, the Cameron, David Cameron from Britain has said that he would uh, he would uh, join in. However, this is there's no concrete proposals as to what, who, and how. And uh, the, the the Middle Eastern states have been withdrawing uh, one by one. Uh, some of them, the Gulf states, have apparently agreed to sending some some uh, aerial, you know, so some some aerial support, uh, but. Uh, not not much more. The Egyptian uh, government has said that he would he would help out, although it doesn't say how. Uh, but in in uh, in um, on the other hand, he demands that the U.S. also starts such a campaign in Libya, where other Islamist forces are also. There's a big civil war going on in in, in Libya, and it's threatening to destabilize uh, Egypt. Uh, then he went to then John Kerry, the, the vice president, went to uh, Turkey, which is supposedly a, a NATO partner and a close ally of, of the Americans. However, in Turkey, the um, the, the the government refused to send uh, to help in any way, you know, actively to help, really, and in fact also refused to allow the Americans to use their own uh, military bases in Turkey for such a campaign. So basically, the whole thing is disintegrated, and obviously. Uh, it, it's clear why is is because it, it's a, basically it's a swamp. It's an adventure. It's not going to solve anything. And any country who goes in there is going to be trapped for years, and it's going to hemorrhage. It's going to be a hemorrhage on their on their budgets, and also it's going to cause a lot of internal dissatisfaction by another ad imperialist adventure, which is basically what this is, on uh, a, a, a campaign in order to try to reimpose and dominate Iraq. For the in the interests of of imperialism, uh, is not going to be popular in these countries uh, where where the the situation is already shaky and there is a lot of ferment going on um, beneath uh, the surface. The surface. Thanks very much, Hamid. You discussed uh, some of the instability that this uh, new military campaign could create. Obviously, the initial uh, reason given for the campaign is the rise of the Islamic State and the and the kind of uh, terror that we've seen them unleash across the region. 
Do you think this military campaign can actually solve that problem? Can they can they help get rid of the Islamic State and their influence in the region? Well, the the it's it's interesting how the Islamic State is is uh, portrayed as this big uh, boogeyman and this big foreign enemy that's basically uh, threatening uh, civilization as if it's come from from out of from out of nowhere or from outside of of this world. Whereas in fact, the 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 phenomenon of the Islamic State, which is a barbaric formation, is a direct result of the actions of imperialism every step uh, a step of the way. In fact. Uh, before the American occupation of Iraq, there was no uh, Islamic fundamentalism in, in Iraq, and you know, this, in spite of what uh, George Bush and uh, Tony Blair was uh, was claiming, there was absolutely uh, n no Al Qaeda or any other of these kind of uh, organizations that had a, that had a foothold in, inside Iraq. In fact, for most Iranians, uh, <laughs> sorry, Iraqis, um, life. Was uh, was much more stable and uh, and and it wasn't this chaotic bloodbath which which basically it, it is today with car bombings and you know m murders kidnappings and so on every every single day, but by the with this uh, 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 occupation, the Americans they did two things. First of all, they, they, the the living standards in Iraq collapsed, unemployment, poverty, and uh, these things became a became a much bigger factor, in fact, than they were before, which was, we have to remember, I mean, we're not supporting uh, Saddam in, a, in any way, but uh, today's life, for most Iraqis, is much worse than, than, than the Saddam era. And at the same time, the, the Americans also destroyed the Iraqi state apparatus, uh, which meant that, uh, that in order to, to dominate the country, they had to rest on different uh, gangs and tribal tribes uh, uh, on different militias, sectarian militias, and in fact, sectarianism became the way to the way the Americans dominated the Iraq. They had it enshrined in the constitution, in all the elections, in all the institutions of the state. Sectarianism was the major part. It's like Iraq was nothing but different uh, clans, and in fact, before before this. Uh, especially in the Sunni areas, there was no uh, Sunni identity. It wasn't a major issue. It was, we, the people were seen as Iraqis, uh, and even uh, the the Shia parts of the country were, and the Kurds were oppressed to 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 a large degree. Uh, it was it was it didn't channel sectarian hatred as such as as much as hatred towards uh, the, the 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 regime. The sectarian violence was not. Uh, any factor in, in Iraq, and the Americans uh, caused it basically, and also um, how is it? Uh, encouraged it, uh, and in fact forced people to align themselves with different sects. If you have, if you wanted to vote in Iraq, you had you know the the Sunnis had such and such a part of the uh, vote, the Shias had such and such a part of the vote, and uh, there was no other kind of uh, way around it. And every time there was an attempt to overcome it, the Maliki government, which was installed by the Americans, um, basically destroyed it, crushed it by, you know, through sectarian uh, means. And especially in this situation, especially the Sunnis came to feel themselves, and it's basically, maybe not directly to the Islamic State, but, uh, but the U.S. has facilitated its growth and probably also trained many of its fighters who was then uh, further radicalized in, in the Syrian civil war and, and drifted into to, to this issue. And in fact, I think what he's trying to do now, by, by, by you know, uh, doing another campaign against basically the, the Sunnis, is not going to change the situation. And also, who is he going to rely on in the ground? Because obviously, you cannot just bomb yourself to victory. Who is he relying on on the ground? He's relying on... Uh, several Shia militias, Iranian special troops, and the uh, and the Iraqi army, but which is not really a functioning army at this stage. So it's basically, he's he's only uh, he's trying to control the, the sectarian uh, civil war by by f strengthening the one side even further. So in fact, it's not going to change anything. And I would say that uh, in the next uh, uh, period, no one will be able to uh, hold on to those areas. No one will be strong enough to, uh, to, to hold on to those areas because the people do not want to be occupied by, um, 
by what they see as is increasingly enemy uh, forces. Now, in in response to that, uh, the Americans have said that they were going to build uh, new uh, entities, new armed, and basically the Iraqi army is going to be split up and uh, and decentralized. So each state or each province has its, its own army. But that's that's just a res another recipe for disaster. It's just, it's just again going to fuel up the sectarianism and and all this uh, e even more. So, in my opinion, there's a, well, maybe the Islamic State will be defeated because uh, obviously it, it, it cannot really um, sow deep roots, but that doesn't solve the situation whatsoever. And in fact, what the Americans have done, what they're increasingly doing, is to throw the whole uh, area and possibly the whole region into a into a situation of complete chaos, which will take years and maybe decades to uh, to to overcome. Thank you, Hamid. Uh, you mentioned uh, a bit about the effect of the Arab Revolution on the situation in Syria and Iraq, uh, and also discussed briefly the the Syrian civil war and its influence in this situation. Do you want to perhaps give a bit more of a background to the current situation in the Middle East as a region? Yes, well, um, I would say that 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 obviously the 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 Arab Revolution was in a was an extremely um, strong movement, uh, had deep roots amongst deep support amongst the population throughout the Arab world, not only in those countries where it was uh, uh, successful. However, it's it's also clear that the revolution does not proceed in one uh, straight line. Uh, from you know from inception until uh, until victory, and the most important mistake that the that the revolutionaries, especially in Tunisia, and and Egypt made, was not to take power when when they could. You know they had the chance several times to basically take power to overthrow the whole old uh, regime, uh, but but they but they did not do so and. In return, power fell onto different reactionary forces. In in Tunisia, it was mainly Anada, who uh, who was who was then pushed pushed aside as well. Although they still play a role, but um, but 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 that completely demoralized the revolution. And in Egypt, there were several governments, in fact, that had been overthrown. There was first the Tantawi government, which was a military government, which was then replaced by a Muslim Brotherhood government. Again, another bourgeois government, but with an Islamic face, which was then again overthrown, and uh, the Sisi uh, government took power. And and now, also Sisi is not is sh is showing to to be not any different than than the, than all the rest for uh, for normal uh, people. Although, obviously, he, he he acts differently, and he he has his conflicts with the Muslim Brotherhood and so on. But he's not decisively changing anything for the Arab masses, who are still. Um, caught in this, uh, in this, um, uh, what do you call it, in this um, situation of uh, poverty, uh, deprivation, of unemployment, uh, and of, of, uh, of, of a lack of uh, democracy. Basically, many Arabs would say, well, nothing has changed. And uh, that is not <laughs> due, to the reason, due to the weakness of the, of the revolution, but the fact that the revolution did not have the leadership which was far-sighted enough to uh, to take power into its, its own hand. In fact, at every stage, it just gave power back. It had power, but it gave power back to different factions of uh, of the counter-revolution, of the old regime, of the bourgeoisie, of the of the of the representatives of capital and capitalism, which is the main source of uh, of all these things. And that has caused a, a certain uh, how can I say is an ebb in the movement. Uh, a certain tiredness in the movement, and uh, and in other countries, as in in uh, Syria, for instance, the process has gone even further. I would say uh, the Syrian revolution started off as a as a real revolution, as a, as a revolutionary movement with wide support amongst the masses, especially in the eastern parts of the country. Um, but 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 because the revolution did not have a proper program. It could not attract um, the working class in the cities, especially, to, to, to the revolution, who did not necessarily support Assad, but who did not see a, a real alternative in the revolution. And in that situation of stalemate, uh, what happened was that gradually 
the di different reactionary forces, especially from from Saudi Arabia, from Turkey, from the Gulf states, and also U.S. and Western imperialism, saw their chance to intervene there and arm different groups. Although they didn't arm revolutionary <laughs> groups, but they armed the sectarian groups, especially Islamist uh, groups of, of different shades. Um, and and by whipping up this uh, sectarianism, they basically they also they used it as one to. Um, to, 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 to gather some people around them, but also to push away the, the revolution, the revolutionary elements. And this is, uh, this is a situation that has led to today where we have basically a uh, counter-revolution on both sides. And the Americans have been, have been a, a, a partner in, in, in doing this. Um, and, and they basically fueled it. Now this has spilled over into Iraq uh, uh, as well. Uh, and this is this is causing a destabilizing situation. But I would say that the, this question of um, um, this question of uh, the, the Arab Revolution it should not be seen as an isolated as in isolation and as a finished process because that is the, the, a revolution is, does never go off in a straight line. And in fact, what we're witnessing here is very very. Um, harsh, brutal lessons that the Arab masses ha have learned that if they do not take power, they, the, the counter-revolution will, of some shape, and it will rev take revenge on them. And this is a very uh, harsh lesson, but, but it's nevertheless one that the, 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 Arab, the Arab masses will have to learn from. And I would say that the key countries, although in Syria and Iraq, I would say revolutionary uh, movements uh, are excluded for the immediate and medium term uh, situation um, but in the in the in the rest of the the region the, the situation is not finished and the key to the situation in Iraq and in uh, in in, um, in Syria lies in these countries the Egyptian revolution although several times has been disappointed and there is a I would say there's probably a certain tiredness in, in, in Egypt but none of the fundamental problems has been solved and also the revolution is very strong in the sense that it has confidence people know that they overthrew the, the Mubarak regime they overthrew the Tantawi regime effectively they overthrew the Morsi regime and uh, even in Sisi's time they overthrew a government, uh, the Biblawi government, in uh, February and March of last year by by massive workers' movement, which which swept uh, Egypt. So this is an undefeated movement, but also, of course, a movement that has not reached any practical conclusion. So that that means that there is going to be a period of ebb, but at a certain stage, the movement will rise again on a higher level, and there will be another confrontation between revolution and uh, and and counter revolution, and that will reignite the whole movement again in, in the Arab world. But Egypt is not the only place. In fact, the other uh, great working classes of the region uh, are Turkey, which is a deeply polarized country. And Turkey was always, you know, uh, put on a pedestal as being the main, you know, the, the wonder of the, of the capitalist world, uh, along with China and Brazil and so on. These were the countries that couldn't that were defying the, the general crisis of, of capitalism, but um, um, but but they uh, what do you call it? Uh, but 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 today the the Turkish economy is going down. Uh, inequality is immense in Turkey, and we have seen over the past uh, few years, especially in the Gezi Park protests a year and a half ago, that there's massive resentment underneath the surface, and it is basically a powder cake waiting to explode. The other country, which is a key to the whole situation, I would say, is Iran, uh, where, which, which also has a big working class, which has been oppressed for decades, but which in 2009 sh took, a, you know, uh, took its first step onto the arena. There was, a, there was a, the Green Movement, which was, a, which was, a, which was in, a, in a, the initial stages of a revolutionary movement. It was defeated, although that wasn't a... a, a it wasn't a, a, how can you say, a conclusive uh, defeat, and in fact, the the resentment, the hatred, is uh, building up under the surface. And I would say that the Iranian society is is uh, moving towards a big, um, big explosion. However, 
the the present government with uh, with the, these uh, the the negotiations that they're having with the Americans, and the the prospects of opening up Iranian markets and uh, you know, for for jobs and investments and so on has kind of put this thing on hold. People are waiting to see what's going to happen, and they will reach a deal with the Americans because the Americans now need the Iranians in Iraq in Syria. Um, and 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 there is there is a deal that that it just needs to be signed and formalized basically, but the Iranian masses are waiting for this. That that is a point of reference. Uh, however, the once that's been reached, the the question of once the question of the big, you know, the the, the American threat, American imperialism is out of the picture, and the and the and the government is cooperating with them. The question of uh, of bread will uh, rise again, and and if they open up. Once they open up a bit uh, on the lid and the pressure inside Iran, there will be a major, there will be major explosions again. Then the working class will step into the scene again, and that is the key to transforming the the whole uh, situation again. Uh, 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 the movements in these, uh, particularly in these countries, uh, will, uh, but of course, uh, it will uh, will change decisively the the whole situation. But I will just say one thing is that to the final thing I, w I wanted to say is that. Uh, this is not uh, just in these countries. In fact, the whole of the in the whole of the Middle East, there's uh, there's uh, uh, there's in instability and mass and rage and anger underneath the surface. And none of the states, which the stateless or the, the you know these uh, these puppet states, which was uh, initially put in by imperialism, are are safe. Uh, countries like Jordan is is on a, is a, is a powder keg. In Saudi Arabia, many people many people might not know this, but there's massive uh, poverty and uh, and um, uh, unemployment is rising and so on. And the Gulf states do not have, and in all these states, there's no legitimacy left for for the ruling classes. So this uh, this whole thing is uh, obviously this is, this is a black reactionary situation in, in Iraq and and Syria, but at the same time, it, the, the 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 workers' movements from uh, other countries are ready, or the, the movements in other countries is ready. And once there is an explosion, then the, the, the movement throughout the Arab world will again uh, transform the situation in these countries as well. Thank you for joining us today, Hamid.